It was a quiet Sunday in Parkersburg, Iowa. Church bells had faded, families were grilling, and kids rode bikes through calm streets. No one knew that above the clouds, nature was preparing to change their town's history. Within minutes, the sky would collapse into total mess, and one-third of Parkersburg would disappear from the map. How could eight minutes change everything? Let's find out. May 25th, 2008. 4.30 p.m. The air was warm, still, and heavy. Birds had gone silent. Long gray clouds gathered on the skyline, curling into strange shapes. Weather scientists across Iowa began noticing something unusual on their radar screens. Two storm cells merging, feeding off each other, twisting tighter with each spin. In the local TV station, Forecaster Mike Porcaro leaned forward as the storm grew stronger. This could turn into a tornado, he warned quietly, but no one yet imagined it could reach EF5 strength, the kind of tornado Iowa hadn't seen in more than 30 years. By 4.45 p.m., the first tornado warning flashed across screens. Sirens began to scream loudly through Parkersburg. Many residents, used to false alarms, held back. Some watched from porches as the western sky darkened, the clouds taking on a sickly green color. The air turned thick, almost hard to breathe. At 4.57 p.m., something shifted. The wind disappeared, replaced by a strange, creepy quiet. Then came the rumble, deep and steady, like a thousand trains rolling together. Power shone unsteadily once, twice, and went out completely. Within seconds, the first funnel cloud touched the ground west of town, a dark column twisting upward into the sky. Farmers on the edge of town could see it, wide, solid, spinning fast. One said over his CB radio, the monster had been born, and in less than 10 minutes, it would destroy an entire part of Parkersburg from the earth. 5-2 p.m., the EF-5 tornado roared toward Parkersburg, growing wider, darker, faster. What began as a small funnel had now stretched nearly three quarters of a mile wide. It ate up everything in its path, fields, barns, trees, fences. The roar was very loud. Inside town, families rushed for basements. Mothers screamed for their children. At the football field, players dove under seats as the wind began to twist metal around them. It sounded like a bomb going off, one survivor recalled. As the tornado reached the western edge of town, Power lines snapped like whips. Street lights exploded. The first row of houses lifted from their base and disappeared into the swirling black wall. Cars were thrown like toys. A pickup truck flew more than 200 yards before slamming into a field. Police radios made sharp, dry sounds with static. It's on the ground! An officer shouted before his signal cut off. The funnel was now fully wrapped in broken pieces. Wood, glass, steel, spinning at over 200 miles per hour. At 5.6 p.m., it crossed Highway 14 and hit hard directly through downtown Parkersburg. The pressure drop was so huge that some buildings exploded outward. Residents in basements heard walls breaking into small pieces above them, their world shrinking second by second. Eight minutes. That was all it took. When the funnel finally lifted at 5.14 p.m., silence fell the kind of silence that follows something too big to understand. And when the dust cleared, Parkersburg was no longer the same town. 5.10 p.m. The heart of Parkersburg was under attack. Main Street, once lined with cafes, hardware stores, and small-town shops, was now a blur of flying broken pieces. The tornado's core ripped through the center of town, flattening everything within seconds. People huddled in basements could hear the sound of their homes being pulled apart, wood breaking into small pieces, glass breaking suddenly, roofs ripping off like paper. One man later said, it wasn't a sound, it was pressure. You could feel the air trying to pull you out. Streets disappeared under piles of ruins. Cars were rolled and crushed. Trees that had stood for generations were stripped bare, their trunks twisted into knots. The local high school lost its roof and homes that had stood for decades became empty slabs of concrete. At the town's water tower, a camera caught the tornado's full size, 
nearly a mile wide, dark gray at the base, white at the top, glowing with lightning inside. It looked alive. Weather scientists confirmed later that wind speeds were more than 205 miles per hour. And yet, in the middle of the storm's mess, small acts of courage stood out. A volunteer firefighter ran door to door, pulling neighbors into basements moments before the tornado hit. A mother covered her son beneath a mattress, saving his life as their house disappeared. When the tornado lifted, Main Street was gone. 22 businesses had been destroyed. One third of the town was left as broken pieces. Nine people were dead, dozens injured, and hundreds homeless. But among the destroyed remains, one thing remained. A flagpole still standing. The American flag, tangled but not broken. And as the storm moved east, Parkersburg faced its next challenge, surviving the after effects. 5.20 p.m. The roar was gone. The wind had stopped. In its place came a strange, empty silence that covered Parkersburg. The smell of rain and soft wall material filled the air. Dust hung so thick you could barely see a few feet ahead. Those who survived began crawling out of basements, climbing through broken wood and shattered glass. One man looked around and whispered, it's all gone. Every street he knew, gone. Every landmark, gone. Houses were left as broken pieces. Streets disappeared under heaps of broken pieces. Power poles leaned at unnatural positions. Cars sat upside down in trees. The water tower, once standing tall, had a big open break near its base. And the town's high school, a symbol of pride, was changed completely. Emergency services rushed in, but the roads were blocked. Ambulances had to drive through fields. Firefighters pulled survivors from collapsed basements using their bare hands. Every minute mattered. Neighbors called out for missing loved ones. Dogs barked endlessly. The only other sound was the faint hiss of leaking gas lines. In one collapsed home, search teams found a young girl clutching her doll, alive but silent. In another, a couple held each other under the destroyed remains, speaking softly prayers. The tornado had lasted only eight minutes, but in those eight minutes, 288 homes were destroyed and 22 businesses destroyed. It was as if someone had dropped a bomb on the town. And yet, within that silence, a different kind of sound began to rise. The sound of survival. Voices calling for help. Neighbors pulling neighbors free. Parkersburg was down, but not gone. And as the first night fell, a new battle began. The fight to fix things. By nightfall, rain began to fall over what was left of Parkersburg. Without power, the town was in complete darkness. Only the flashing lights of emergency vehicles cut through the mist. Search teams moved carefully through the broken pieces, calling out names, marking houses with spray paint. At the quickly put together command post near the fire station, search teams gathered maps lit by flashlights. We're missing at least 20 people, one said. Another replied quietly, we'll find them. Shelters were set up at the high school gym in nearby towns. Families arrived carrying what little they had left, blankets, a photo frame, maybe a pet. Tears mixed with rain as people tried to understand the loss. Volunteers came from miles away. Farmers brought tractors to help clear broken pieces. Churches opened kitchens to feed everyone. The National Guard arrived before midnight, setting up floodlights and generators. In one part of town, a pastor stood over the ruins of his church and said, the building is gone, but the church isn't. His words spread fast, a small spark in the darkness. By dawn, the size of the destruction became clear from the air. Drone footage later showed an entire section of Parkersburg simply wiped out, nothing but gray piles stretching block after block. The damage was estimated at $75 million, but the true cost couldn't be counted in dollars. And yet, even as the town mourned, people began to fix things. Someone found the town's welcome sign and placed it upright near Main Street. Another hung a hand-painted message on a broken fence. We will rise again. And they did. Weeks passed. The sound of chainsaws replaced the sound of sirens. Dump trucks and cranes rolled in from all over Iowa. Volunteers came in waves. Students, soldiers, neighbors, clearing broken pieces, 
one shovel at a time. The people of Parkersburg refused to disappear. Families who had lost everything pitched tents beside the bases where their homes once stood. Kids drew pictures of houses on pieces of plywood. Slowly, fixing things began. New homes went up with stronger walls, safer basements, and made stronger roofs. The local high school reopened in temporary classrooms. Donations poured in from across the country. Food, clothes, cash, even handwritten letters of encouragement. For months, every sunrise brought the same scene. People working together, covered in dust, fixing what nature had tried to destroy. There was grief, yes, but there was also strength, the kind that only comes when a community refuses to give up. By the one-year anniversary, the town gathered at the rebuilt football field. The same place where players once hid under seats now sounded with cheers again. A new flag rose over the stadium, the same one that survived the storm. A local teacher said, we lost eight minutes of our lives, but we gained a lifetime of courage. The tornado had tested Parkersburg in the hardest way possible, but it couldn't break it. And as the new homes rose from the ruins, a new question remained. Could it ever happen again? A year later, Parkersburg looked different. New roofs, new roads, and stronger shelters. But the marks of May 25th, 2008, still ran deep. The people had rebuilt their town, but the question on everyone's mind was why it happened and could it happen again? Weather scientists returned to study closely what made this tornado so violent. Using radar data, they discovered that the storm had developed one of the very strongest spinning actions ever recorded in Iowa. The wind speed inside the funnel was more than 205 miles per hour, enough to rip pavement from roads and throw entire homes into the air. The key factor, they said, was timing warm, humid air rising into cold, dry air at the perfect moment. One scientist described it as the atmosphere flipping a switch, and once that switch was flipped, there was no stopping it. New safety systems were installed across the state, sirens were improved, and emergency alerts began going out through phones. Schools practiced tornado drills more seriously. Families built storm shelters into their basements. Parkersburg had become a lesson one written in wind and loss. But behind the science was the human story, the strength to change, to face fear again, and to prepare for the future. Survivors spoke in schools, teaching the next generation what those eight minutes meant. One local weather scientist summed it up perfectly. Nature will always have power, but knowledge gives us a chance. And for Parkersburg, that chance was hard earned and never forgotten. Ten years later, Parkersburg was no longer just a name tied to tragedy. It was a symbol of rising again. New homes stood where ruins once lay. Trees lined the streets again. Kids played baseball in fields that had once been filled with broken pieces. The memory of the storm lived on, not as fear, but as a reminder of what the town had overcome. Memorial stones marked where lives were lost. Each year on May 25th, at exactly 5.14 p.m., the town gathered in silence. Bells rang nine times, once for every person who didn't survive that day. The rebuilt high school became a place of pride. Its walls were made stronger, its halls filled with laughter. A wall painting near the gym showed a tornado changing into a firebird, the symbol of rising again. People still talked about that Sunday. The calm, the roar, the silence, after. But they also talked about what came next, courage, togetherness, faith. Parkersburg had faced nature's fury and refused to disappear. When asked what kept them going, one survivor said simply, we remembered who we were and we built that back. Today, Parkersburg stands stronger, not because the storm spared it, but because it didn't. And that's how a town destroyed in eight minutes found a way to live forever. In just eight minutes, Parkersburg, Iowa lost one third of its world but it gained something can't be broken, strength. The storm took homes, lives, and history, but it couldn't take hope. Every brick rebuilt was a promise that even in nature's darkest moments, the human spirit stands tall. Subscribe for more true stories that prove survival is more than luck, it's courage.